Hey everybody, it's Mandy from the Roseville Splash Team. I am in my kitchen baking cookies. Come on, join me. That is a fun mess to make, but it takes forever to bake cookies. You need so much patience even to find all the ingredients. Let's check on Mickey and Teresa and see what they're making today. Hi everyone, I'm Mickey and I am making chocolate chip cookies. Yum, right? I'm just waiting for them to get out of the oven. Waiting could be so hard, they smell so good. Okay, I think I'm gonna need some patience here. Good thing we can learn about patience from the Bible. Isn't that right, Teresa? That's right. Hi, everyone. I'm Teresa, and we're having a bake-off. I'm starting to make some butter blossom cookies. Want to know my favorite part? The Hershey Kiss that's going to be right in the middle. But before I can even start making these cookies, I need to unwrap all of these Hershey Kisses. Ah, oh, I wish I could just use them without unwrapping them. But that would save me time and would ruin the cookies, wouldn't it? So since I wanna have good cookies, I'm gonna to have to be patient and put in the work. It's a good thing that in our Bible story today, we'll see that patience is waiting until later for what you want right now. But there's one thing we don't have to wait for, Brandon and John. Let's go check out what they're up to. Ooh, a marshmallow. Sure. Eat the mallow, miss out on something better. What do you mean? If you wait and don't eat that mallow until I return, then you will receive something even better than a mere measly mallow. Better than a marshmallow? <laughs> Not one. Bite. Okay. Come on. <laughs> okay. I don't think he can wait and resist eating that marshmallow, but if he can, I'm going to give him an entire bag of marshmallows. <laughs> All right, here we go. Count to ten. Let's go. <laughs> Where's the desk? Did you eat the desk? Um, uh, you ate the desk! I didn't eat the marshmallow! Oh. Alright. Oh. everybody, I'm John. And I'm Brandon, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. You've been waiting a whole week to see this show. Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. I know you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Did somebody say manners? Uh, no. I am Melinda Manners, and I can always tell when my help is needed. I can sense when someone is being manly. And when someone is not. Oh, oh yeah, all right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Chair. We're not so, yeah. <laughs> my dear boys, what seems to be the problem today? Uh, no, no problem. We're just 
trying to get the show rolling. So. Patience, my dear boys, patience. It's one of the most important manners. I wrote an entire symphony on patience once. Oh, is that <clears> right? <throat> Let, let's... Nice. Yeah, I feel like mm. I'm learning so much from that. Oh, that's just the tip of the ice cube. Oh, no, that's not the uh, way that... Uh, uh. If you want to be manly, don't speak out, just sit quietly. Don't correct or presume, just sit tight and listen to me. Now, I meant what I said about sitting tight. Shoulders back, boys. It is unmannerly to slouch. <clears throat> Better? So, uh, Melinda, now that you're here, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, so many things. There's nothing unmannerly about having fun, after all. I keep my favorite things with me at all times. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Hold this, please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Oh. A ball for baskets. A screen flat for movies. And this electronic sewing box. Wow, you certainly do know how to have fun. How did you pull all of this out of that bag? I may be delicate in my manners, but I am a strong woman. Manners and strength are like peas and carrots. They go together like deserts and ferrets. How do deserts and ferrets go together? Now, my most favorite fun to have is the kind that you can really learn from. Ooh. Ooh. Let's play a little game I like to call Bake and Wait. Our preparations are complete. Now we simply need to insert the pan into the oven. And in 27 short minutes, we can enjoy some delicious light bulb heated balls of cookie dough. 27 minutes? Hey, this may take a while. You may want to speed through. Let's eat! Actually, now the cookies have to sit in the cooling chamber for five minutes. Oh no, thank you! Mmm! Mmm! Oh. Wow! <laughs> it would be unmannerly for me to say I told you so. So I'll just sing it. Being patient is always right, but you didn't listen, for you're not so bright. It's Bible story to Emma Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen. What's up today, Kellen? Well, today we're looking at something that happened in the very first book of the Bible. That's right. Genesis, specifically Genesis chapter 25. This is the story of two twin brothers, Jacob and Esau. It wasn't my fault. Jacob tricked me. Um, what's going on? You can't prove anything, Esau. Yes, I can. Tricky McTricker face. That's not my name. It should be. Okay, okay, slow down. I think we might need some kind of judge to handle this. You have just stepped into the courtroom of Judge Trudy. The cases are biblical. The people are historical. The courtroom is not real at all. This is Judge Trudy. 
Just to be clear, this courtroom did not appear in the Bible. Oh, I'll take it from here, Kellen. So, Esau says here in your case file that you were born first. So you got your family's rights and inheritance. Is that correct? That's correct. I was born first. It is my birthright. Mine. Hmm. Well, a birthright is a really big deal. It means you'll get more of your father's wealth and property. And that you'll become leader of the family. Yeah, that's right. But Jacob, you stole the birthright from your older brother, correct? No, I did not steal it. He sold it to me, fair and square. The, the trickster, at it again. You were the one who made the trade. Order. I need to know the real story. Bailiff, roll the security footage. Jacob, quick, I'm insanely hungry. Feed me some of that stew. Sure, but first you have to sell me your birthright. Look, I'm dying of hunger. What good are those rights to me now? Promise me. Promise me you'll sell me your rights. Fine, I can't wait any longer. I promise to give you my birthright. Wait, Esau, did you not even value your birthright? I was hungry. Oh, but you didn't have one bit of patience. You could have waited and eaten something else later. Let me ask you something. Was the stew worth it? It was okay. Mm, mm, mm. Taste less, but for a moment. But your birthright would have affected generations. It seems to me, Esau, that your complaint against your brother is your own fault. I cannot rule in your favor. You made your choice. Court is adjourned. This has been Judge Trudy. Even though there's no way that was the real Jacob and Esau, Judge Trudy summed it up well. Esau did not value his rights as the firstborn son. Being impatient made him sell something that was worth more than we can imagine for the price of one little bowl of stew. Bummer. Seriously. You know, being impatient can actually cost you. Totally. When we're not patient, we rush in without thinking about the consequences. Oh, I know. I bent my tongue. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I think we can avoid a lot of problems if we just pause and think before we act. There's a lot we can miss out on when we're not willing to wait. It's good to hear. Thanks, Kellen. Yeah, thanks. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I think I've ended that today. Put that away, please. Sorry. Reveal the question. What could you miss out on by not waiting? Yeah, like when you eat snacks before dinner and then you're not hungry and it turns out to be your favorite meal. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, or you can miss out on spending time with your friends who are running late because you didn't want to wait for them. Or maybe something even more drastic like an Esau's case. Mm -hmm. Talk about it together and we'll see you next time. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was The, the So-and-So so -and -so Show. Keep going. Nice. We're really coming into it now. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for the big finish. Oh, I left the blowtorch on. So, what could you miss out on by not waiting? What things could you experience if you slowed down and took your time? How much more present-minded would you be instead of always jumping ahead and wanting to get to the end, or get to the answer, or get to the prize? I think it might help to think about our memory verse. 
from Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. We've got a song to help us learn this one. Let's do it. Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord, be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Job. You know, our Bible story today showed us that if you don't wait, it could cost you. And we have a great way for you to learn more about how to be patient and spend time with God this week. Let me show you. It's our God Time Weekly Devotions, and you can sign up online to have this mailed to your house, pick it up in the splash room on Sundays, or in the bin outside of the church's main entrance anytime. Chase is coming on here next to show us something that he's learned about being patient. Let's go check it out. Dear God, you know how much I've been looking forward to the pizza party. We've planned it for, well, it seems like forever. We sent out the invitations, and it took a while for everybody to tell me if they could come. Then we made a sign-up sheet so people could bring their favorite ingredients. Even pineapple. Dad and I were going to make the dough so everybody could make their own personal pizza. I never helped make the dough before. So I was excited when we started setting out the ingredients in Grandma De Martino's recipe. We had to make a lot of dough so everybody would get their pizza. Now, when you make pizza dough, you need to put some yeast in a bowl with water and then wait for it to have some bubbles. Dad had a phone call, so I waited some more. And waited and waited and waited. I thought I waited long enough, but I didn't. We waited on the dough to rise, but it never did. I thought I'd ruin the whole party, but then Dad said even Grandma did the same thing. We went to the store to get some pre-made dough we could use. It wasn't like Grandma's, but at least that way, we could still have the party. God, thank you for a great party. We need to try it again sometime. But next time, help me to remember have a little more patience. Chase. These cookies look amazing, but they're still really hot. If I eat one now, I know from experience, I'll burn my tongue, and then I'll never taste how good these cookies are gonna be. What could you miss out on by not waiting? Sometimes when we aren't patient, we miss out on things that we're waiting for. I don't know about you, but it's hard to wait, isn't it? This week, I want you to think about how good things come to those who wait. And ask yourself the question, what are you missing out on by not waiting? See you next time.